Hey YouTube, there's some really bad Saturdays, the loneliest night of the week. Oh well, um, let's talk today about this crazy contraption. <laughs> That's a pun. I actually just came up with that on the fly. I didn't even think of that. Pretty proud of myself. Anyway, let's talk about this. Um, my first initial thoughts on it. Don't worry, it's not mine. And why those thoughts don't matter. So, Let's talk about this instrument. I'm borrowing it from a friend. Thank you, friend. I'm not going to say his name just in case. Um, he's not playing it at the moment because he's playing his other horns and he just graciously offered like, hey, I'm not playing this. You want to borrow it? I didn't even ask. That doesn't happen very often. Anyway, I've got my mouthpiece, obviously. Con C lead pipe. Con SL6280 slide. This is a 562-580 dual bore. So it's two one thousandths larger on the lower leg than a normal dual bore. It sounds really big. 580. Wow. Normal dual bores are 578. So it's like almost, it just doesn't really matter. Um, we've got green hoe valve set. I think this is a legit, you know, they're all legit green hoe valve sets, but this is a legit from a like green hoe built con instrument because it's got the ribbed ferrules. I had one of the valve sets that I think was sent to con to be mounted to a bell and those don't have the fancy ferrules. It does have the single piece valve caps. Usually the, the fancy valve sets have the dual piece valve caps. So don't know what's going on there. Um, con tuning slide and most special of all, the piece de resistance. There we go, I had to remember my French is the con 62 sterling flare in nine and a half inches not a lot of these around maybe a dozen plus <clears throat> this one was owned personally by tom Kleber of the cleveland orchestra um, cleveland has always played kind of different instruments um, i talked about this when i was talking about my 50 bl a while ago but i'm pretty sure it was cleveland where the music director was like i want German trombones in my section and the bass trombonist at the time not Tom was playing a Bach 50 and he's just like uh, Bach can you make me one of these but the bells bigger so it looks German and they're like okay and they rolled out a 50 bell to nine or a ten and a half inches instead of nine and a half and that's the 50 BL that's why it exists because some music director was getting real picky and wanted a German instrument um, I had another video about the Teutonic sound elsewhere in my back catalog if you want to check that out. Anyway, Cleveland's always been a little oddball. Um, I think the King 8B was also developed for, I think, Tom or his predecessor. It's a very different King bass trombone. Um, aren't any other instruments like that really. It's very large in the bell throat and stuff, kind of like an Edwards today. There's not a lot of them out there. The word on the street is they're not very good. Um, and later in life, before he retired, he played the 62 HCL with Sterling Bell. The HCL, of course, is the con with the two CL valves. Takes up a bunch of space, really big horns. And they're the only instrument that came with the dual board slide like this. <clears throat> that was, I think, the only way you can get these other than special order. So this is a bunch of parts that have never been put together by a manufacturer and have only been put together by maybe a couple people. I actually know, I know another instrument pretty much just like this that's used in a military jazz ensemble uh, by a friend of mine with condo board slide, green hose, and another Sterling uh, 62 bell. His is 10 inches. Um, and that thing is amazing. Um, well, what about this one? I said I had thoughts about it. Uh, it's okay. I. It's very different. Obviously, it's going to be a way different instrument than my Bach with axials. And just like, you know, that's a completely different setup. Um, this is still different. I mean, I also play a Holton 185, which is completely different than my Bach with axials as well. And it's different in a better way, I'll put, at least for me. This has some very interesting response characteristics that 
you know, interesting is a nice way to put it. There's some stuff I don't like that how it responds. And the big thing is the third partial, which is F in the staff down to, you know, B natural, feels very strange. The other partials also feel a little weird. There's a different slot. That's stuff I can get used to over time, but the third partial especially sticks out and then it doesn't especially play very well. first notes I've played on that partial so far. Now problem is, I, and it prob um, part of it is the bell, part of it is this dual war, um, and part of it is probably this lead pipe. Um, I have changed out the lead pipe. This is the one that was in it when I got it, and the other lead pipes seem to play better. But the slot on the third partial is very large, which is not to be unexpected. Um, dual wars usually do that. The problem is, is that it doesn't feel like you ever actually walk into the right spot. There is so much room for that. Like I said, that's to be expected. My horn is the same way with the dual bore. But even with a dual bore and a big mouthpiece, there's usually a spot where it's like, oh, this is the right place. It resonates, it responds best, we have the best articulation. And on this, when I'm in the right spot, those do not feel to the face. Obviously, as I go lower, bending it down, it sounds bad, but it doesn't feel that different on the face. Even when I'm playing in tune, quote unquote, I don't have a tuner here, uh, the articulation feels like I'm just barely skating on ice. Like, ugh, if I tug too hard or don't use the right air, it's not going to respond. So, very strange feeling. It's worst on F. As you go down, it gets kind of progressively better. And actually, the valve notes actually feel pretty good. The B and C are all right. But that F feels very dangerous. And... One problem about that partial is, guess what? In almost everything you do on bass trombone, that's the most common partial. You play a lot of stuff in the middle of the staff on bass trombone. A lot of bass trombones don't have extremely good high ranges, like above maybe F or even above B flat. They don't have like a good high D. Not the biggest loss. You don't need that range very often. Some horns don't have the best extreme low ranges. Again, it's nice to have that, but you don't need it that often. That middle range, though, if that feels weird and kind of unpredictable and maybe doesn't center or sound the best, I don't know. For me, that would probably be a deal breaker. Again, remember, I've had this for like 12 hours or something. I have not had it very long. Um, these are first impressions. Also, green hoe valves. I've had green hoes in the past. I had a 62H. G, I almost said HCL, it's an HG, which was one of the instruments sent to Con and assembled there. Um, still good instruments. I liked mine. I didn't think it was good enough to keep and it was worth more as money than an instrument. So it's long gone. This doesn't really play like that. And the valves, I've come to realize I kind of don't super get along with these really high compression, really well sealing rotors um, because they have almost too much compression. And what does that mean? There's no valve legato. It's so hard to get from note to note without getting an articulation or having the horn kind of blow back at you um, during the transition because you go from open or valve note, doesn't really matter. And in that transition, the face of the valve gets in the way of the air. And these are so well sealing and it's so efficient that it just blows back at you for a half second. So this is no articulation, of course, but you can hear. That's about as smooth as I've played them yet, actually. And sometimes I'll actually miss notes because it blows back and it adds so much articulation that I just miss the slot that I'm aiming for. 
I don't really enjoy that. The fact is they actually play okay once you have the valve down or once you don't have the valve down. I don't mind the blow. Pretty quick, snappy response. They're good rotors. <clears throat> They're not stuffy. The extreme low range is good. It's not ultimately open. My axials, in my impression, are kind of better in every way except for throw. These have a very short throw. And actually, I kind of like a longer throw. It gives you more room for a valve legato. So, two strikes for me. That third partial is very strange. And the valves are, like, too snappy for me. I think I could get used to the valves if someone stuck a green hoe in my hands. They're like, you have to play this. I'd be like, okay, I can deal with that. But that third partial, I'm not quite as sure about. Now, I'm going to play this for the next, I don't know, a few weeks or whatever. I'm gonna try different lead pipes for mouthpieces. Um, I'm really gonna try and dial my playing for it. But in the end, it doesn't really matter. This is not my instrument. I'm not going to buy it. I didn't really think I was gonna buy it. I'm just really happy to try it out. And my opinion doesn't matter. So let's talk about that for a second. I have, I form very um, strong opinions about the instruments that I play because I want an instrument to work with me, I have a sound concept, I'm a certain size, I have a certain kind of oral cavity, I like to play a certain kind of mouthpiece, and that doesn't transfer to everybody else. I don't need to like this instrument, I don't need to play it well, it's not mine. And it's hard for me to remember that, I think other people run into the same problem. Um, we want other people to like the things that we do, and when they don't, it feels like a personal attack, when in reality, it's not. It's totally okay if Callum plays this and sounds great and has a good time playing it, um, and I don't, because we're two different people. So this is a reminder to myself and to y'all, um, you know, let people enjoy the things that they enjoy. You don't have to enjoy them, and uh, you don't have to be you don't have to be mad about it. I ran into this recently. Um, for some reason, a lot of people have been talking about the Yamaha YBL 830 Xeno bass trombone. I play one at work. I've played nearly a dozen of them, um, and they're all over the map. The one that I use at work is not especially good. And I just, you know, people are like, ooh, I'm thinking about getting one of these. And I'm like, I don't know if I would, because they're not that good. Um, and other people will be like, oh, I really enjoy mine, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, how do you enjoy that? And I have to stop myself and be like, it's totally possible for them to enjoy an instrument that I don't. I don't have to like everything, and they don't have to agree with me, and that's okay. So, um, introduction to this interesting uh, con monster, and uh, I'll have more about it later as I play it more and hopefully try to get used to it, at least a little bit. I don't need to get used to it. And a little bit of a reminder that you don't have to like things that other people do. That's it. Bye!